It's a very addictive, although I prefer kids play it to video games. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, now, I also know that you, you, you know, you're a recovering chess addict, but you can't help yourself. Did you, did, did you look at any of the games that Magnus Carlsen played in, in the recent tournament? Uh, so the recent World Chess Championship match was maybe the most important one in five and a half decades. See what I mean? Uh, 55 uh, 45 years. 45 years. And a phenomenal match. Uh, there was an American, Fabiano Caruana, who was tearing up the chess world. And Magnus was nervous about playing him. And basically it went to the chess equivalent of a shootout in football. And uh, Magnus prevailed, but Fabiano will be back. Ken, Ken why did Carlson forfeit game 12 when he was winning? Why did, did you? Why did he withdraw? Why did he withdraw? Playing along. Did you know this already? I, I almost wonder, was it like, a, was he like playing with him? Was he like, you know, I'm going to beat you in sudden death tomorrow? You, you, can, have the, you can have this game. He, he was getting nervous. He was sort of losing his nerves at the end. But also, I think he felt very confident that, again, in the chess equivalent of a shootout, he was going to win, and he did. Wow, that's like a dunk. That's like a 360 <laughs> dunk. Here, right. I'm winning. You have this game. I'll take you tomorrow. With that said, why would you not take this guy's word for economic issue? I would, if you know, if you can, you know, play chess at that <laughs> level. I, I need to know. So, are we at neutral? And, and, and if so, what, what changed in this world to put us at neutral at, at these low I, levels? I mean, I think that we have no idea what neutral is at the moment. <laughs> it's changed a lot. It's just like you were in this spaceship and it shook up all over and you don't know where you are. The Fed, I think, is deliberately running the economy hot. I don't think they think we're at neutral. But really? we've been going so slow for so long with so, you know, you don't know people coming into the labor force, businesses reluctant to invest. I think the consensus is let's let it go. We haven't seen inflation in ages. Let's see what happens. But no, I don't, I don't think. Do you, have, think a, do you have a definitive answer on what's going on with global inflation and, and why that seems to be. Is it different now? Is what, it technology? Is it de demographics? What the hell is it? What, what I, is it? I think economists don't know. I mean, a lot's changed, but we really don't know. And it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the United States. I mean, there's a school of thought also in the Fed that once inflation gets ripping, we're not going to be able to rein it in again. And there's a lot that say, you know, it's so sluggish to move. People's expectations are so slow to change. Uh, I mean, a little bit of it's central bank credibility. We've got to give them some credit, central bank independence. But this will be a very interesting experiment to see what happens. You know, it's interesting. You just bring up the idea of, of people being re very reluctant to change behavior. And I think you had written some, uh, some stuff earlier this year just about the idea that after a recession like this, you are not going to see behavior change for a very long time. Is that employers, too? They're not going to want to overextend, hire too many people, or make too many promises to pay people more when they've just been through this painful experience where they had to lay people off and let, let factories close? Well, I think on employment, things are going pretty well. I mean, we're at a level of unemployment we didn't imagine But we was haven't possible. seen the CapEx spending that we would have well, anticipated. Ap that is what I was going to say next. Yeah. But what we haven't seen is the CapEx spending. I think the deregulation helped, but I worry that this trade war and nervousness over trade undoes some of the good that deregulation has done. People are nervous. They don't know what's next. They don't know where to go. Well, there is an argument that if you consider, you know, software purchases and cap, is it a measurement issue with capital spending? I mean, the way a, a business today would invest for future growth? So there's a measurement issue with capital spending. There's a measurement issue with output. The whole idea of gross national product was designed back in the days when you could count the number of tractors and houses. And a lot of our output today is very, very hard to measure. It's hard to measure investment, hard to measure output. We can measure the interest rate. And it's pretty clear that there's been sort of, you know, quite a bit of push down, which we think of as, you know, more saving than investment. You, you also have talked a little bit about what to expect from China and how this, the equation has changed for them, too. Their greatest asset, labor, people, is not going to be necessarily the thing that, that moves them forward, given how our economies have changed. China is slowing. How much? Who knows? I don't think they believe their statistics or know what their statistics say. But they're, you know, eventually it was going to slow down. And I think the big question is how will they manage it? I mean, they depend so much on the high housing prices. They depend so much on the construction, which is much larger than ours at the peak. And so how they're going to manage it with so many vacant apartments, overpriced houses, uh, it, it's, it's, a big, it's a big question mark, and especially if they can't depend on exports as much, which they can't. Even without Trump, they can't because 
you keep growing faster than everyone else, and eventually there's nobody to export to. So we're at, what, 21 trillion, whatever, we're, wherever we are. We have an unbelievable economy. We, we can handle debt, obviously, in the past. If, are we close to a tipping point where we can't handle it? What, what kind of number? And, and you put on, you know, the, the unfunded liabilities that we don't even talk about anymore. You put it all on, but do, do you lose sleep with that? Or are you thinking about chess? Well, well, sorry to keep saying this, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, I do think it also depends on how you fund it. So we are funding at a relatively short maturity so that if interest rates did rise, not the central scenario, but if they did rise, it could get uncomfortable quickly. Yeah. Uh, no, the U.S., had, my thesis advisor, Rudy Dornbush, had this old saying that capital markets give the U.S. enough rope to tie it uh, around its neck several times before it hangs itself. Uh, I think we've got a ways to go. All right. Ken Rogoff.